Hello again everyone, it's Deborah here on the Costa Blanca in Spain. Welcome again to another one of my videos. I'm glad you could join me. In this video I want to look at how to make faux opal pendants and here is an example of some of the opals I'm going to try to replicate. Now you can see here there's all sorts of beautiful opals on the market. Australian opals, firestone or fire opals, black opals, white opals, and they're all gorgeous. It's such a gorgeous stone. So I thought I'd have a go at making some for you. Again, you know, I like to break up my glass and work with scraps rather than complete pieces because I find it easier uh, with less disasters for want of a better word, <laughs> uh, and for a variety of other reasons. And for this project, that should work very well. So we're going to have a little bit of an experiment. I've not done these before. I have come close with some when I haven't been intending to do it. So I'm going to put them in moulds so we can use lots of little pieces of glass to create the effect. So this has kiln wash on it. Now I would imagine you have lots of scrap glass the same as I do and I segregate mine into clear non-textured glass similar to this and textured clear scrap glass and we can use either. In fact sitting there like that they almost look like opal don't they? So it's just a question of capturing that. We are going to need some clear on the top, which again, I just use all my little scrap bits for that, and break them up more if necessary. And other than that, I've got lots of little bits of decroic frit, which I've probably shown you before. And I collect this when I cut up other pieces. Uh, you get quite a collection of them. It's a shame to let them go to waste, isn't it? So I just collect them up. They're only tiny pieces, but they soon mount up. Uh, the other alternative to these, of course, if you haven't got them or you don't want to collect them, is the decroic flakes that you can buy, which are, you know, similar, well, um, pretty much identical to the ones that you collect, but they are quite expensive. So here we go. We need quite small pieces. I like to tip mine out onto, for example, the paper here. So it's easy to collect them back up again then because you can just lift up the paper and tip it in. But in the meantime, you can see everything that you've got. I would advise in this against using two bigger pieces. These are only small pendants anyway. But for example, if you put like this square in, for example, it's, you're still going to see that square shape when it's fused and, and opals don't generally have square shapes. They have more sort of your little triangular shapes in there. So the shapes that are in there, which are uh, irregular and triangular shapes, tend to be reds, greens and gold uh, and irregular shapes which fits in well because you'll probably find you've got a lot of triangular and irregular shapes. So I'm just breaking up a few smaller pieces here. But first we need to put down a little bit of clear glass. So again, I break all mine up and then you end up with lots of bits of tiny frit in the bottom. I haven't got much in here at the moment because I've used a lot of it. Um, but when if you collect them, you can use up your tiny bits of frit in the bottom. If not, of course, you can just use normal uh, frit, medium or fine would do. And this is to give it a smoother back to the base. The next portion of this video, it's only a short portion, is a bit blurred and I apologise for that. 
because um, my lens was dirty and I didn't realise till after I'd recorded it. So I've redone this beginning bit uh, so it's clear, but the, it's only a short piece and then it goes back to being clear again. I just wanted to point that out. Right, so I'm just left with these tiny little bits in the bottom here. So we're going to put some in each of them. Just take that one out, it's quite a big piece. Right, so, and this is the therapeutic bit. I'm just going to sort out some little pieces that I've got lying around. That would be nice. Tip it away from you to get the colour that it's going to be when it's fired. See, that looks blue when you look at it straight on. You tip it, oops, <laughs> if you tip it like that, it was red. And that's just disappeared somewhere, so better get another piece. There's another one there. And in fact, I'm going to break that into because that's going to, these are only going to be small pendants, so um, by the size of the mould. So I'm just going to break that into, I don't want that right across the middle. So let's just fill this up with all little bits. I'll probably just fast forward after a while through this because otherwise you'll get a bit bored. Right, so you see I'm starting to fill these up. Now what I'm going to do to try and create that opaque effect is I'm going to add a bit of opal powder. But I only want a thin amount because it's going to block it out otherwise. It'll blot out a layer. And again, this is an experiment. So try not to clump it. And I want it at different levels as well. Because it might look, look like it's not going to do much, but it is quite opaque. I'm going to carry on filling that just without any powder in. And I'm going to fill that a little bit more. And then I'm going to add a little bit more powder. Okay, so I'm filling these. I'm thinking it need they need more red. To look like an opal, they need more red. Now, I just happen to have... This little bit of cherry blossom mix for it that I bought a while ago. So I'm going to use, get some of the some of the red bits out of this and put them in. This isn't decroy these little bits, they are actually red glass. So let's just put a few of those in. I don't suppose a bit of pink would hurt either. And I'm thinking the key is the opaqueness. Add a little bit more powder in three of them and leave one without. Okay, now I'm going to add a bit of this decroic, these decroic splinters here. And I think that's enough glitter in there. So I'm just going to top it off with clear because there's not a lot in there at the moment. So when it actually fuses, uh, it's going to shrink in and not be nice circles because it's not going to be six millimetres high at the moment. Not enough in there. So we'll add some pieces of clear. And if you add the bigger pieces of clear on the top, you get less bubbles. There'll be quite a few bubbles in this, unless you do a bubble squeeze. But I don't think you're going to particularly notice it in this, so I'm not too worried. So, plenty of glass on the top of there to create the... Uh, the mat that we need and it's ready for the kiln so that's going in on a full fuse right so these are how they've come out of the mold I had put sprinkled some opal powder glass if you remember when i made these it hasn't made any difference i obviously didn't put enough in and it hasn't made they look the same as the others and now we need to add some different backgrounds to create the different types of opal 
like this black opal for instance and the others I showed you at the start of the video. So I've been trying some of my bits of decroic as a base. This one comes quite close. When you put that on to get the fire opal effect because it's you've got the greens and the yellows in there. Another nice base that I thought was this one. It's going to come out pretty much as an opal effect um, but because as I say there's a lot of clear in that you can see the base on it and you've got the added bonus of all the decroic on top and the little pink bits in there so, so that's going to be another option putting one on black we put that one on black for instance can you just see all those lovely colors in there and it is starting to look a bit more opaly because you've got the black behind it's bringing out all the colors so if you take it off you can't see a lot of the colors put the black on and you can see all those different greens and orange for the fourth one I'm actually going to put it on another piece with a clear background and the most intense base I've got is this candy apple red Florentine base so I've decided not to put these back in the mould because they'll just be too thick because they, they'll obviously they won't be able to spread out. I'm going to uh, cut a base for them slightly bigger because that's going to spread out. So I'm going to do a fifth one and this is going to be opal in one easy go. And that is with this piece of ripple and this piece of herringbone. And it's just a question of working out the best way to put them that on top of that. I'm thinking that's got quite a lot of coating on that, even in the valleys. So I think I'm going to put this on the bottom and this has got less coating in the valleys so you can actually see that underneath. And I just wanted to show you the lovely colours of these two when they're put together. Break the base up and arrange it in the bottom of here and then I'm going to what well, you'll see coat it with some clear powder and then I'm going to break that up and put that on top. In my previous video I'll show you how I break up my glass with a hammer which I'll show you in detail but for those of you that haven't seen it I put it in one of these strong bags that you get your glass comes in these strong bags so I put my the glass in there that I want to break up I don't want to mix those up seal it and then just make sure that I've, it's on something solid that's got no give in it and a whack with the hammer and it, it'll be broken. So here we are, it pretty much destroys your bag, they don't last very long but at least they keep it safe. I'm just putting in a little bit of, just a tiny bit of clear frit in the bottom to give it a smooth base. So that's the bottom layer put in, all your little bits from where you broke it up that you've got left over you can just pour on there to fill in. I'm going to put my layer of powder. Just before I do that I'm just going to fill in slightly those gaps. And here's the second layer. And now I'm just going to infill some of the gaps and to get around the edge, pardon me, with just some clear glass, that, pieces of glass that I've broken up. Smooth, try and get a smooth edge and a smooth finish. Right, let's get those in the kiln. Well, look, I've got an extra uh, mould here that. I'm going to be putting this in the kiln so I'd be silly really if I didn't fill this with something so but all these little bits of scrap pieces both here and elsewhere so I'm just going to do a multicolored several layer pendant in an attempt to to do some dark opal pendants and uh, see what we come out with so I'm going to put in case you haven't seen my other video I keep all my, my bits of glass 
and like my black pieces in particular and I break them up so that I can use them in the bottom of the belt mould or so I don't have to buy for it. It's a cheaper option and it saves throwing them away. So I'm just going to put my layer of black in the bottom just to give a nice black background to the piece. Oh, this is very quick and easy to do. Okay, so I'm just going to get tiny little bits of all different coloured decroic face up on black in the bottom. Another great way to use your scrap. So I'll be back when I've done that. So there we go, it's quite a few metallic -y colours in there and now I'm going to top it with decroic on clear. So we have two layers of decroic. Added colour, bling, shine, sparkle, whatever you want to call it. And doing it this way with the decroic on top broken up allows you to see the layer underneath doesn't just completely blot it out you your ordinary clear patterned ordinary clear or your textured just tends to work better because it's got grooves and valleys in it which allow the light to pass through so some decroic up some decroic down And I'm just going to put, sprinkle a little bit of clear on top. These have come out of the kiln and they're looking nice. But let's look at this one first anyway. This is the one where we used those two pieces, the two pieces of glass, if you remember, and all the different colours in there. Definitely looks like an opal beautiful let me just put it on something black so that you can see the colors that are in there and that is going to pick up whoever wears that it's going to pick up the colors of what they're wearing as well are going to reflect in that but such subtle pastel colors now the only thing was slightly not hot enough because i put something else in the kiln as well at the same time and this these were near the front this set was near the front I had another set near the back and the heat didn't quite get to the front of this so I could just tidy that up on the grinder uh, and I could grind that off as well and then put it back in on a fire polish and that would be your piece completed if you wanted I mean, it, it's beautiful however it's quite thick it's a little bit thicker than what I wanted because it's in the mold obviously it can't melt down to six millimeters so in actual fact that's probably more like one centimeter it's quite chunky to have hanging around your neck so because it's got those lumps on there as well I'm just going to stand it freely like that and full fuse it which means it's going to spread out a bit and then I'm probably going to cut two oval pendants out of it which I think will be more of an acceptable size and I'm going to do that in the microwave kiln because it's already been fired in a normal kiln it will be quite strong you would you would be wary of putting something that big thick and chunky in a microwave kiln normally because it would shock it too much but because that's already been fired whatever even if it does shock it and it cracks i'm still going to have be able to use it in some form or another the fact that it's two two pieces of beautiful dichro fused together you're never going to change that you're always even if it breaks or whatever you're always going to be able to create one or two nice pendants from it in one way or another if only you could buy glass just like that you'd have your opals straight away so that's that this one same same scenario it's not quite smoothed out as much as i would like it to i'm going to do the same with this one i'm going to blob this one out and probably create two pendants from it depends how much it spreads out or just cut the overlay it again but I certainly want them a little bit thinner so that's been full fused now and has flattened out 
Uh, so I'm going to cut it across there with my Dremel and then I'm going to make like a D shape there and a D shape there then and then the rest I'll do on the grinder and uh, fire polish. So I've cut that in half. I've grinded it in the glass grinder into two pendants. These have come out from the fire polish. Quite a nice shape. So by the time I've got the bale on, a nice tubular bale on that one and the other one. And here it is side by side with the image of the black opal and they look pretty close to me. And this one is lovely. Well they both are really. All the different layers of decroic in there and the depth. And this is this is this is what happens. I mean obviously you saw me do it, I just threw any old thing in there and put some decroic on the top. And because it's all broken up you can you get to see what's underneath and you just can have a multitude of colours in there you're not dependent upon the piece of decroit that you've got what colours are in that what patterns are in that what textures are in that you can just make your own break up your glass combine it in different ways and you'll always make a unique piece you'll never have two pieces the same nobody will ever be able to create a piece the same as yours and the colour and that you get out of doing that, the different colours, it, it's just, well, I think it's absolutely the best way to go if you want to make really pretty shiny Broic pendant pendants. And the other one that I put in the microwave kiln that was you no know, thick, it broke. <laughs> I thought it might. However, I have this piece here, which... I'm just going to put a bale on that and have that as that shape pendant because opals are not uniform anyway and it just looks so nice. So it's quite fortunate really, it's fire polished it as well at the same time. There it is complete with the bale. I'm trying to show you all the different colours. We have green, cerise, purple, gold, a hint of blue. These pieces here, this is interesting because it shot off and hit the side of my microwave kiln and folded over on itself. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it as a little opal nugget and just put a bale on it. Just to say as well, the fact that this broke, I just went up to 100% full power when I did it. I, I did half expected that it would break anyway, but... You know, that's how you come up with some nice pieces sometimes when you let things get out of control. But uh, if I'd have done it uh, slow, I could have done it, couldn't I, at 50% or 30% or 20% for a few minutes and then maybe start at 20%, gone up to 30% power, up to 40% power for another minute, 50% power. Could have done it that way, uh, which would have shocked the glass less and it probably would not have broken. But I didn't. I just went at 100% because I'm a little bit impatient like that, as I'm sure a lot of people are. And it's not, I knew it wasn't going to be disastrous. And this last little one, I'm actually going to put this on the grinder on the back to create a frosted effect behind that should make it look more like an opal. And it's looking slightly more opaque as an opal would. And that's what it's going to look like with the bale on. These are the four original ones now out of the kiln. And I think we've successfully made different faux opal pendants. This one I'm so pleased with because it's not got any spiky bits on it or anything. And it's 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 almost a perfect circle. I mean, you could just put a bale on that and have a lovely pendant. Nice size, not too thick. This one, it's got a beauty of its own as well. I'm going to tidy the edges up. But I quite like the white that we've got in there, or the pink I think it was, because it's contrasting against the, the shine of the decroic, in fact making it shine even more, I think. 
and so the same with this one you've got we've got all the little red bits in there as well and then this one is just beautiful so let's go and tidy them up this one i didn't fire polish and that's beautiful i know i keep saying i know i keep saying i just love my decroit jewelry but it is it's just shiny and beautiful and very much like an opal a faux opal so we'll say success for that you can actually see on the back the acrylic glass that we did put this on top of so i mean even that side looks nice looks like a little gold coin even I wish you could see the depth of everything in it. This is what gets me, what is so nice about the decroit glasses. Not only do you have the colours and the shine and that, but you see all the different depths in there. I mean, that actually, that bit there looks very deep in there. And that looks even deeper because you've got these floating on the top. And you've got that layer of decroic in there and then you've got well decroic at all levels and the same with this one that's this is the same different colors but again having the white floating on the top emphasizes the depth in the piece and look at that gorgeous red sitting in there and the green at the bottom so here are the final images of all our faux opal pendants I'm really pleased with the results. I hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. You'll be able to go away and make your own. Look forward to seeing you in my next video, which will be out shortly. Thank you for everyone who subscribed, liked, turned on notifications, and importantly shared my videos. Uh, for those of you that haven't, if you would, that would be great, thank you. It's totally free to you. It does help me and I'll see you again soon. So I'm saying bye here, Deborah Baker from Costa Blanca in Spain. Bye bye.